And I'd like to ask you quickly, the timing of uh, this whole matter, uh, the petitioning and, of course, uh, the filing of uh, this trial, uh, what do you make of that timing? Well, uh, it's problematic, actually, because we are in election season. So to that extent, uh, a lot of motives are being ready into it. But overall, generally speaking, you know, the law doesn't recognize a particular time for doing of uh, certain things if infractions are committed. You know, but for any person who is interested in uh, following up on an object objective investigation, this is the wrong timing. And, um, but by and large, as I said earlier on, the, going back to the facts, we've also read the respons responses from the uh, executive arm of government. We have not seen uh, a direct link between the executive and what is happening. And uh, what we hear are all innuendo, you know, and uh, implications, but the, the president... If, if the I may quickly also bought in, uh, the, the, the question is, could this have happened in a normal setting and this kind of charges against uh, the CGN without the knowledge of the head of the executive uh, talking about the president? Well, I believe it is possible. I believe it is possible. Ordinarily, it shouldn't be because of the weight of the issues and the personality involved. But in the setting that we are in, that sort of thing could be possible. You remember the president, they are claiming a, the possibility of a fifth columnist, you know, coming in. And uh, we've seen in recent times all sorts of claims and exchanges between the various political parties. So the president and the presidency, uh, they may be entitled to say, look, uh, there are people somewhere who are generating crisis. Uh, so as to give a black eye to, to the government during these wee hours of, uh, of, the, of, of the political process. Okay. Uh, pro uh, let me quickly come to Mr. Adishino here. Yes. Uh, there are suggestions by some governors telling to suggest that the CGN should not appear before the CCT tomorrow. Mm. Is that right? If I were to be one of the council appearing in the matter, I will not ask him not to appear. What would you ask um, him to do? I'm, I'm saying this to the best of my own ability and perception as a practitioner. I will not ask him not to appear. I will ask him to appear. But I will raise preliminary objections before his plea is taken to the charges. To stall it? Or to no, 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 please don't use that language. You say preliminary objections don't stop trials. They are integral part of trials. Which may be that this but, shouldn't but happen before in the first place. Is taken. In other words, before it submits to the jurisdiction of the tribunal, I will raise legal objections, preliminary objections, which I will plead with the tribunal to resolve. In the light of the law, the constitution, and in the light of the decision, that is subsisting and that has not been set aside. I'm not unaware that the case cited by my good friend, Femi Falano, Esquire, is presently, I think it's presently on appeal, but it has not been set aside. It represents the law on the matter. And my good friend from Abuja will confirm that he is not unaware of Section 287 of the Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria that obligates every authority and person to obey and enforce court judgments. So to the extent that that inquiry against the Federal Government of Nigeria is still the law today, I will raise a preliminary objection against All right. the trial. Mr. Falano was asking that the Federal Government should withdraw this case. Do you think that will be right? I think that is the view that I share as well. Uh, in the light of the existing law, the decision of the Court of Appeal, because if the government, if uh, the prosecution should insist on proceeding, there will be problem of jurisdiction. 
of the court in the light of that judgment, which is still the law. Uh, one may, at some point, uh, have problems with really whether that is actually the proper uh, interpretation of uh, what should be done in relation to judicial officers. But at the moment, that remains the law. It has not been set aside. Uh, so I will advise that uh, the matter should be withdrawn. Okay. And then uh, if they want to proceed, they should now forward their petition to the agency, who will now continue with the investigation from there. Of course, there are problems when sent to the AJC, uh, uh, AJC we, because... We, we need to go, uh, Professor Maman, uh, so, so we can get uh, the view of uh, Mr. Deshino. Mr. Deshino, the final word. Yes, I want to say that I adopt the suggestion of Mr. Falano and that of my big brother, Maman Tahir S.A.N., with gratitude. And let me add that in the words of the, one of the former presidents of the United States, Ronald Reagan, he said, peace is not the absence of conflict. Peace, it is the ability to handle conflict by peaceful means. This is a matter that can be sorted out peacefully by pulling it out and then ask the petitioner or whosoever is responsible to channel the petition to the National Judicial Council in accordance with due process because the gravamen of rule of law is due process. Uh, I was going no to more. ask you that can, can he be facing trial and still be the CGN if he goes from tomorrow? Which trial? I mean, if the arraignment goes on for tomorrow, can the CGN be the CGN? If the arraignment the... goes on tomorrow, I've told you what I would do if I were to be. And I believe that his lawyers okay. will know what to do. And if there is such uh, steps taken, right. you can't ask him to step aside when the jurisdiction of the, of the, of the court is being challenged. Well, I must sincerely thank you, Mr. Dele Adishino, for coming thank on tonight. You. And also, Professor Tahir Maman from our Abuja Studio, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Vice Chancellor of the Base University. Thank you for your time and your opinion tonight. Well, that's our show, everyone, for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Shio Akimale. Bye-bye.